brothers, my brothers, my sisters, my mothers, my fathers. God bless you all. Amen. I want us to stand up on our feet. Because that song sings volume. Yeah. Yeah. It speaks what? Volume. It speaks volume. If God has been faithful over your life, I want you to open your mouth and adore him. We as children, we want things from our parents. There's a way that we appeal to them. I want you to open your mouth now and appeal to your father. The one that's faithful when all hope is lost. Open your mouth and worship the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you this evening. We give you praise and adoration. For you are the kings of kings. You're the lords of lords. You're the ancient of the days. You're the line of Judah. There is no like you, Lord. Open your mouth and praise him. You're the ones who are wondrous. You're the winners of winners. You're the kings that are all for kings. There is no like you. You are the conqueror. You're our fortress. You are our banner. Lord, we look up to no other God but you. We thank you for showing us compassion. You're the hope of the hopeless. You're the father to the fatherless. You're the Keep the husband to the widow. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and adoration. You are our butler. You are our fortress. There is none like you. You are the prince of priests. You are the kings of kings. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah El Shaddai. Lord, we worship you in this day. Your name is Wanderer. Your name is awesome. You are the Lord of Lords. We glorify you. You are the pillar of our life. There is none like you. You are the living water. We thank you. We give you praise. You're the awesome God. There is none like you. You're the one that makes a way where there is no way. You're the one when all the hope is lost, you are there. We give you praise. We adore you. You're the help of the helpless. We glorify you in this place. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your hands in this ministry. We glorify you. We thank you for our life. So many did not wake up this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you. We thank you. You thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we appreciate you, Lord, for there is none like you. We surrender all unto you, we surrender all unto you, for you're the one that can do all things. You're the healer, you're the one that can heal. You're the one that gives peace where there is no peace. Oh, we adore you, we give you praise and adoration. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we adore you. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. There is none like you. There is none like you. Only you do the things you do. You're the unchangeable changer. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. What you have to agree about her life, no one can stop you. We thank you. We thank you. We glorify you in this place. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Even when we are not faithful, you are faithful to us. Lord, we thank you. We glorify you. We glorify you. For there is none like you. Who are we? We are nothing without you. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. May we all be seated in the presence of the Lord. This evening, I am ministering on who are your friends. Who do you keep as friends? Whether you're married, whether you're about to get married, whether you're divorced, whether you're a widow, whether you're children, who do you keep as your friends? Are your friends profitable or not profitable? I'm going to give you examples of profitable friends and not profitable friends in the Bible. Can somebody please read Psalms 55 verse 12?
55 verse 12. If you're there, please read. Psalms 55, verse 12. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could not warn him. Neither was it he that hated me, that did manifest himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. Go on, please. But it was thou, a man, my equal, my guide, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death cease upon them and let them go down quick into hell. Hold on. What kind of friends do you keep? Psalms 55 speaks about a friend that you walk to church with, your bosom friends, your one and two, they call it. When they see you, they see this person. Who do you keep companion with? There are many broken marriages based on this. Who you cancel with? Who you tell your business to? Who looks like friends, but are they friends? These are people that you tell your life to. If your husband is good to you, you tell them. If your husband is not good, you tell them. Who do you tell your business to? Who do you keep as friends? This is a very big question. Is this person improving your life? Or not? Do they add value to your life? Or do they take from it? The power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21 talks about death and life is where it is in the tongue. Who do you tell your business to? Who do you go for advice? The Bible says we need to be careful who we talk to. Because the person goes to church doesn't mean the devil cannot use that person for you or against you even. As young people, as human beings, generally, we need to be careful who we talk our business to. They are profitable friends. I'll give you an example of profitable friends in the Bible. David and Jonathan was one. Psalms 2, sorry, 2 Samuel 1, 26. Jonathan risked his life for David. He was a son of Saul. He was meant to be king, but he trusted God and protected David, knowing the heart of his father towards David. There are not many friends like that. He gave his life for a brother that is thicker, a friend that is thicker than a brother. There's not that many friends like that in this world. 
He gave us his throne so David can be king. And he lost his life. How many friends do you have that, are, that can appreciate you like that? How many friends will speak the truth with you to you? How many friends will not envy you? How many friends will not backbite you? You open your soul to them. You wake up in the morning, it's this friend you call. The last thing at night is this friend you call. Is he a friend or is he an enemy? You have to be careful who you keep as your companion. The only true friend we have is Jesus Christ. John 15, 13 to 15. Jesus is a, a, an example of what friendship is about. He gave his life for I and you. So we can receive salvation. A true friend, indeed. Closer than your brother. When you are stressed, who do you call? When your marriage is rocky, who do you call? When your children are not walking the way they should, who do you call? When your husband is wayward, who do you call? Who do you call? What kind of friends do you keep? Are they profitable or non-profitable? We have Ruth and Naomi. That was another very good example of friendship. Even though Ruth was a daughter-in-law to Naomi, but she left everything she knew, even though there was no reason for her to follow Naomi anymore because her husband had died. She left all the gods that she knew behind and followed Naomi, not knowing that was the destiny, her purpose and her destiny. Friends can make you or break you. I'll get to that later. She followed Naomi, left all her gods, left her family and everything that she knew. And she followed Naomi in faith. She looked up to Naomi's God, who was the true God. She leaned on that God, believing that the God that Naomi was worshiping would save them, and she followed. She put her life at risk and followed Naomi to a foreign land and a foreign God. She walked in faith and followed Naomi. In the process, even though she didn't know, she walked into her purpose. She walked into her destiny. Because she became the great grandmother of Jesus Christ. Through her lineage, she married Boaz and served the God of Naomi. In the process, through her, the house of Jay-Z and Jesus Christ was born. Her purpose was established. Likewise, when you walk with the wrong people, your purpose will not be aborted in the name of Jesus. Your destiny will not be taken, stolen from you in the name of Jesus. 
when you walk with the wrong people, the wrong friends, when they add no value to your life, but take, when you sit among wicked people, when they are coming to you with different kind of gossip, ouch. Relationships. It can make you or break you. Naomi, Ruth followed Naomi and met with her purpose and met with her destiny. She believed in the God that Naomi was serving. How sure are you in the people you're walking with? Do you just walk with them because they dress nice, they talk the talk, they walk the walk? To you. What is the purpose of the relationship that you're in? You have a friend that calls you every day. What does she do for you? What is the point of that relationship? Where is it going? What are you looking to achieve? Friendship, friends, purpose, destiny. Many destinies are stolen because of the wrong crowd. Come on now. Many are dead if you look on the streets because of the wrong crowd. Who do you walk with? Who do you talk to? Do they add value to your life? Let's look at another person in the Bible. The Bible says, if you're walking with a person, Amos 3, verse 3, you must have something in common. Otherwise, you would not be friends with that person. Proverbs 27, verse 17 says, I am sharpen an iron. How does your friend sharpen you? Do they encourage you to sin? Don't worry, just do it, no one will see you. No one sees you. We all sinners. Just this once, God will forgive you. Is that the kind of sharpened iron that you're walking with? Do they sharpen you into fornication? Do they sharpen you into a position that you shouldn't be? If no one sees you, God sees. Do they encourage you not to have a conscience? It's okay. Nobody will see it. Nobody knows. What is the purpose of that relationship? Where is it going? Where is it going to take you to? Is it fruitful? Is it productive? Is it positive? We all have to ask ourselves. If you're a single person and you're looking to get married, get married. Be careful who you walk with. You are not perfect. You telling that friend, oh, you know, he's this and he's that. You have someone that you're quoting. Maybe his trousers are not so long. Maybe his trousers are like three quarters. Maybe he doesn't look the part. 
You know, maybe he wears tie, his tie wrong way around. Maybe his hair is very, you know, not cool. You talk about your courtship to your friend that doesn't have someone. Mm. Come on. You talk about your courtship to your friend that has someone but that isn't happy with that person. And here you are complaining. What do you know that's going through her mind? She can go behind you and take that man. Mm -hmm. True. Purpose. Destiny. If you are married, my husband doesn't cook. Teaching. My husband doesn't help me with the children's nappy. Teaching. You have a husband. She might not have. You don't even know because you're so caught up in your business, releasing your information to her. You don't know her mind towards you because she's available to hear you does not mean she's for you. Does not mean she's for you. Does that friend uplift you? Is that a friend that when things are tight, she encourages you in the word of God? Is that a friend when your marriage is a bit up and down, she's like, just leave it. God understands. <laughs> Why? Because she's single. She wants you to go clubbing together, whatever the case. What is the purpose of that relationship with her? Destinies are stolen when you walk with the wrong people. Please, let's read Second Kings. 13, 19. This is where the tongue, the power of the tongue. If you're there, please read. Second Kings 20, 17 to 19. Unprofitable friendship. Kings 20, 17 to 19. 13 to 19, sorry. 13. To 19. And Hezekiah was attentive to them and showed them all the house of his treasures. Hezekiah was attentive to them and showed them. Please, sorry, and go showed on. Them, and showed them all the house of his treasures. All his treasures, the silver and gold, everything he owned, everything. Like when we open our mouth and we tell our friends our treasures. Treasures are the things that are dear to your heart. Treasures, go ahead please. The spices and precious ointment and all his armory, all that was found among his treasures. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. There was nothing in his house. There was nothing in your relationship that you don't tell that friend. Absolutely nothing. You wake up in the morning, you're feeling sick, you're calling her. You know what, I'm feeling really sick today. Is she a doctor? Is she paracetamol? <laughs> then Isaiah the prophet went to the king Hezekiah and said to him, 
What do these men say, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. He said, They have seen all. When you open your mouth and you tell this friend about you, they can visualize. And we women, we like to dramatize things. <laughs> they will visualize, add salt, pepper, everything onto it. To spice it up. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. There was nothing he had not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left. Thank you. The Lord. Nothing shall be left, said the Lord. If you're not careful, that's what happens. Ezekiah the king had everything, but he exposed his treasures. He has exposed his household. And therefore, the destiny was taken from his household. Do not allow yourself to become slaves to friends. Was that friendship profitable? It wasn't. The friendship was not profitable. Unprofitable friends will steal your dreams. You will lose yourself in them. You will lose your destiny and your purpose. And guess what? They'll be the first one to help you advertise it. CNN, Facebook, Twitter, it's on there, believe me. Unprofitable friends. That was an example of an unprofitable relationship. He lost everything. Everything. And this is real. This happens in a lot of marriages, a lot of relationships, it happens. Why? Because we refuse to close our mouth. We refuse for the Holy Spirit to take control. If you have a problem, go to God. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who gives you advice. Be careful who you expose yourself to. You are complaining that you have two legs, you can't walk. The person you're talking to only has one and a half leg. How can they help you? They can't. They can't. There's a saying, you know, if there's fire here, everyone's gonna run out. Before I can help you, I need to be okay. So if you've got two legs and you're complaining to a person that has a leg and a half, they can't help you. It's like blinking. You can't help it, you have to blink. Walk with godly people that God has shown you. Don't wake up in the morning and turn onto the phone. The phone is not your savior. Your friend is not your savior. God is. He's the one that can fix when you have lost hope. He's an unchangeable changer. He's the one that turns the game around but no one can question him. Why? Because he's God. He's able to do everything. If you're not sure, get into the words. If you spend more time with the Bible, rather than being on the phone, to benefit you. Yeah. 
ask yourself, the friends you're walking with, are they profitable? Many will envy you because of your job. Many will envy you because of your children. Many will envy you because of your car. She didn't see you when you were on the bus for many years. The moment you pick up the phone, oh, guess what? My husband just bought me a car. Okay. She's still on the bus. Oh, don't worry, I'll pick you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I pick you up to church? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Why are you driving and not her? Why shouldn't she pick you up? Why should she not pick you up? Why do you have the great husband? Why? But she didn't see you when you were praying, when you were fasting, when you were asking God for the bone of your bone. She didn't see that. But when the result comes, she's envying. Instead of her to get on her knees and ask God, to share her favor. She's envy. Who do you keep as friends? Who do you keep as friends? Many will say, oh, but we have the same qualification. Why does she have the good job? Why is her salary so much more? They say this, you don't even know. Friends, unprofitable friends. <clears throat> the scenario with Cable, Abel and Cain, they were brothers. <clears throat> That's what envy does. Don't open your mouth to be destroyed. Don't use yourself. Don't allow your mouth to destroy your marriage. Don't allow your, ma your mouth to destroy your progress. Don't allow your mouth to destroy your purpose. I'm not saying don't have friends. I'm just saying, use the spirit of discernment. Do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Do not trust. I didn't say it. The Bible says it. Do not trust in a friend. Guard the doors of your mouth. What does it say, please? Guard the doors of your mouth. Please, can we say to each other, guard the doors of your mouth. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Guard the doors of your mouth. There is a reason why it was written there. It's for a purpose. For ourselves. Please, go ahead. From her who lies in your bosom. From, if you notice, it doesn't say, from the enemy. 
He said, from her who lies in your bosom. Somebody that you love. Somebody that you're comfortable with. Somebody that you trust. Somebody that you will do just about everything for. The Bible says, be careful of that person. Be careful of that person. It says we should guide our mouth. That means be careful. That means sometimes you just need to be quiet and let God be God. The person you're calling cannot solve your problem. Why call them? They can only add to it. They're not the owner of the problem. God is. You're calling me to perform surgery. I'm not a doctor. I can't help you. Does it make sense? Yes. If you say I must help you, then definitely destruction will happen. Let's guide our mouth. If your husband is misbehaving, get on your knees and pray. Because it's only God that can change him. The Bible says he owns the hearts of kings. The hearts of kings. He owns it. Get on your knees and pray. Don't expose him. If your life is rosy, you have an X7 or is it X8 they have now. You live a glorious lifestyle. Don't expose yourself. Don't be telling your friends, oh, guess what? I'm going to Miami tomorrow, and after that, I've got another holiday. Da -da 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 -da. Don't expose yourself like King Ezekiah did. And he lost everything. Some friends are assigned to destroy your life. If you don't know, it happens. They call them destiny destroyers. They also call them destiny wasters. If they don't destroy it, God is on your side. But they can waste it. What should have taken 40 days to 40, 400 years? Destiny wasters. Don't allow them in your home. Don't allow them with your children. Don't allow them anywhere near you. They are friends, but they are enemies. Don't allow them. Whatever your problem, whatever you're facing, even when it's not a problem, if it's sweet, glorious lifestyle, get on your knees, Father, and I thank you. I appreciate you, this favor you have given unto me. Don't get on the phone and say, guess what, Sister Margaret, this is what happened to me. My husband did this and my husband did that and blah, blah, blah. That Sister Margaret maybe doesn't have anything to eat for that day. And here you are talking about going to the south of France. Don't expose yourself. Second Kings 4. Verse 4 to 5. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your son. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your son. This was Elijah with the Shunammite widow. <coughs> he told her to go in and shut the door. He did not say, go in with your son, pick up the phone and call Sister Christopher, or Crystal, or whatever, or Brother Christopher. <coughs> Didn't say that. 
That means there's some things that you keep to yourself. Shut the door so all eyes are not seeing it. So all ears are not hearing it. So all mouths are not advertising it. You've got some people that are looking for the fruit of the womb. And they call their so-called friend that is not a doctor and the blabber. And then you wonder why you're not conceiving. There's a time for everything. There is a time for everything. There's some things you allow the Holy Spirit to take control of. Because the moment you tell that person, she's advertised it on um, Google. Everybody can just tap in. What does this mean? What does this mean? What? Just like that. Don't advertise your problem. As a single lady, what business you have hanging around with someone, men that married? What business you have hanging around with them? Oh, he's nice to me, is he? When are his voting? Where is he going with his niceness? As a single, as a, a married woman, what are you hanging around a man that's married that's not your husband? Oh, he understands, does he? What does he understand exactly? What is he planning to do with his understanding? There's a lot of women that fall prey to that. It's real, it's happening. Even in the church, sadly to say. Oh, but he understands. My husband doesn't understand me. Really? Mm. Single brother is escorting you to your house. Doesn't shut the door after. As in, see you, and you don't shut the door. Oh, let me come in and have some coffee. Okay. Mm. What happens then? After the coffee is cold, the night bus doesn't run. The brother has no money for a cab. Then what happens? Oh, he claims he has no money for a cab. Don't put yourself in a position that will compromise your stand with God. Don't. You're newly born again. You're hanging around with your old friends that are still smoking and drinking. Come on now. You're putting yourself in a position you don't need to be. You don't need to be there. Oh, it's my old body. Okay. Leave them behind. Let them run their race. You are running yours. Everybody has a purpose. Find your name and stay on it. Dreams are destroyed. Hopes are stolen. Joy and peace of mind are taken because of the friends that you choose to hang with. Choose your friends wisely. I cannot underline it more, especially those that are going to get married. There's going to be times when you're very annoyed with your husband. Don't pick up the phone and tell sister blah blah. Don't. It's not everything also that you should tell your pastors. They have their own they're dealing with. I'm not saying don't tell your pastor, but not everything. Not everything need to be able to hold on to certain things and take it to God. <laughs> Hang around worldly people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of 
Jesus. I want us to just say two, two quick prayers. The first one is that, Lord, as I hear this word, help me to have a discerning spirit. Because some of us are in a situation that we just don't know how to get out of it. Let's ask God to do what he does best. Ask him to walk in that situation. Ask him for discerning spirit. Ask him for wisdom to walk in the situation that you're in now. Let's open our mouth and pray. We pray, oh Lord, that you give us the spirit of discernment. That every situation that we might be facing, every situation that we might be in now, that Lord will take control. That you will take perfect control. For you are the author and finisher of our faith. We pray, Lord, that every friend that is assigned to destroy what you have made whole. Lord, remove them from our lives in the name of Jesus. That every, every friend that is assigned to destroy our purpose in this world, to destroy our destiny, oh Lord, remove them in the name of Jesus. Every friend that is assigned to destroy our marriages, our joy, our peace of mind. Every friend that is assigned to destroy our health. Because when you are depressed, it brings all kinds of health issues. Father, Lord, take control. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus.